What's up everyone? So, as you saw in the title, I am going to show you how I do some camera systems. I've installed a few so far, but this is Reolink. Um, they're very affordable. They're pretty good quality for, especially for what you get, you know, your bang for the buck is great. But I'm going to show you the unboxing on this and what you get when you buy a camera. In this video, I'm also going to go over some of the different ways that you can install cameras. Primarily PoE cameras. Um, I don't really like coax cameras a whole lot. But PoE cameras are nice. You only have to run your one wire. And you have a variety of different ways that you can install it. So, you get your little instruction pamphlet. I think you get a sticker. And a little template for drilling the holes for the mount. And I'll get through how I mounted, or how I'm going to mount this up. So there's your template, there's a little real link, 24 hour video surveillance, and then your operational instruction booklet. You also get, uh, I think it's a three foot ethernet cable, which I always, you know, I'm not going to use that. And the box, once you get past that stuff. So you also get this, um... It's like a weatherproof seal for your ethernet connection. You get your screws and then your camera. So on your camera you see you have three plugs on the end, three cords. Um, your one is your ethernet, one is your reset, and one is your power. Now, if you're using a PoE switch, um, uh, NVR, all you need is your Ethernet. The only time you need to run power is if you're just plugging this camera into the back of a router or something like that, where you're not getting power over Ethernet. But the way to go with these cameras is to get a, you know, a PoE injector, a PoE Ethernet switch, or use a um, Reolink NVR which the real link MVR is put power over ethernet and that makes everything much simpler you're only running one wire or one cable to wherever you're putting the camera at so i would definitely recommend doing that other than that the cameras are not very hard to install they do have infrared which they say up to like 100 feet and they also have an sd slot so if you can see here on the back of the camera you take that cover out and you can slide a micro SD in it up to, I believe, a 64 megabyte. For my installation, I'm going to use the SD card. Um, so like I said, you can either use your NVRs, your micro SD. Um, for my house, since I have some cameras up in my garage, I have some cameras on the house, I just do the micro SD, then I don't have to worry about it. I probably will end up getting the server set up here so then I can you know store a little more footage which I mean I'm not too worried about it I get you know as long as you keep the spider webs off the camera you get a good you know a week or two of footage that's saved all the time most of the time you do get you know bugs fly by it'll um, pick that up which you can adjust in the software which I'll show you later on in this video on how to adjust the sensitivity of your motion detection I always keep it pretty sensitive. I'd rather see a bug than ever miss anything. So, you know, which we'll get to that here. But now I'm going to get to the, the mounting of this camera. So these cameras here, these are new style. And they have a little bracket on the bottom, which is kind of hard to tell. But it twists off like that. And then you you mount this up first there's four holes in this so I'm, and later here in the video you're going to see how i mount this up to my soffit on the front of my house so for this part you're going to need your cat 6 or cat 5e ethernet cable your rj45 connectors and your ethernet crimps um, as you can see i showed you how i uh, separated everything out and cut it down and this picture is with the rj45 connector on so for the rest of this video, I'm going to show you my screen capture of setting up the cameras. 
Now there really isn't a whole lot to it. Once you get your ethernet cable plugged in and you get everything set up, you know, like I said, either through a PoE injector or, you know, using the NVR. The NVR is pretty simple. It's basically just plug it in. This is also pretty simple. Um, once I plugged it in here, it, everything came up. I named it. Um, I'm going to go through here and show you what exactly I did and what all I had to change. So right here, you know, I selected it. I have to type in my password since I've already done this. I already have an established password for, you know, setting, up, setting these up. So you just keep that the same. And then you name it, you know, whatever location it is. I named, I think this was the front yard. Um, so once it's set up, you got to do a few things in here. You got to adjust the time and um, your motion zones, however you want your camera set up, whether it be for, you know, recording all the time, recording on motion. And you can also set it up for different motion zones like I'll show you here in a little. So one of the first things we're going to do here is set the correct time and date for the camera. You have to do this for each camera. Um, if you have an NVR set up, you only got to do it for the NVR. But whenever you're doing it like this, where it's each individual camera with an SD card in, you have to do every camera. So you go into your device settings and then general system. And that you can set your time zone, whether or not you want daylight savings or if you want a 12 or 24 hour um, time. So as you can see, you can see what my settings are now. Um, it's pretty simple, very straightforward. Um, I don't, you don't got to do anything crazy here. All the stuff in this is pretty much straightforward. There isn't anything real complicated. And once you get familiar with this software, you know, it's, it makes it really easy. One another thing that you got to do right away is you got to format your SD card. So once you have your camera powered up, um, you basically just go into the SD card and click on it, then format it. And after you do this, then you can now record and save footage. Another thing that you're going to want to do, if you're going to have these set up for motion, you're going to want to go into your motion detection tab and then set up your motion zones. You can also set your sensitivity while you're in here. I normally just kind of keep it where the default was. But as you can see here, you can either select or deselect the areas that you want to record. Um, if you get, if you have an area where you have cars that are driving by, you don't want to record every single car. So you can take that area out, or if it's just a very high traffic area that you don't want to record that, you don't, you can disable that area. Um, I, for this camera, I just kept it on recording everything because there, I don't really have any area where it's going to be a lot of traffic. So, you know, overall, I really hope this video helps. You know, thanks again for watching. If it does help, please subscribe. I'll try to put some links in the description if you're interested in. Now, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I'm normally pretty good at commenting back and helping out. So hopefully this helps. And thanks again for watching.